While I think that most people should switch to Linux for most of their things, not everybody can. But now we have a new tool that lets us keep on Windows and remove all of the nonsense ads. But are ads the biggest concern we have? We'll talk about that on this edition of Switched to Linux. Welcome back to the show. Well, today we want to get into this and uh, we want to talk about how some people might need to stay on Windows for whatever reason, but if you're tired of those ads or suggestions, as they like to call them, well, there is a new tool out there to help. Before we get into that, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, if you'd like to do that, please go ahead and do so. Leave us a like or, hey, maybe a dislike, particularly for those that like to hate watch, and leave us some comments down below. I try to read them all and I respond to the ones that I can. So, of course, let's go ahead and dive right on into this. We've been talking quite a bit lately about how some of the developer previews have had more than they're calling them suggestions, not ads. What are they really? Well, let's talk about what they are, because some of the people had mentioned this in the comments. They're not advertisements. They're, they're recommendations to use other Microsoft products. Okay, so an advertisement is a suggestion. Now, they are suggesting mostly things internal to their own company, their own portfolio. They would really like you to have a OneDrive account if you've not already shelled out some money for it. They really want you to try using their products to keep you locked into their ecosystem. So yes, most of these, which they call suggestions, not ads, but they're ads. We're going to use the term ads. They are promoting these. However, if for the people that are the Windows shills that have not been paying attention, the ones in the start menu, I believe, these ones have been suggestions in the Windows ecosystem since back going back to Windows 10, but the new tests are not Windows feature suggestions. They are actually suggestions or ads for software in the Windows store that is not explicitly connected to Microsoft. And curiously, the one example that we have seen from our documentation is actually the Opera browser, which is kind of fitting being that it's a browser owned by a Chinese company. Also interesting because Windows does everything possible to keep you on edge and not experiment with other browsers. So that might have really been a weird anomaly that by odd chance that happened to be the one that shows up and everything. But it just kind of shows that weirdness uh, of what's going on. But we are starting to see non-Microsoft services push. But as of right now that I know of, we will have these ads for inside notifications. You'll get a notification randomly. Hey, have you considered this? Like... What, what happened to notifications being important, you know? You have them in your file manager. Hey, try out OneDrive. You have them in your start menu, as we just mentioned. And the next one, which is coming in 24H4, is going to be in the settings application, pushing you over onto a Game Pass account, onto their games. Of course, this really only triggers if you are actively using your computer for games, which is interesting because the computer at some level knows what you're using it for. Does that information go to Microsoft or not? Well, being the battery of data collection that they do, I would wager that the answer is yes. But that's where the ads can be found. I'm sure that they will find more interesting places to cram them. How long before we get an ad watermark over your desktop or something else crammed in some little spot that none of us can even think of right now because they just, we just haven't thought of it, but they're just trying to cram an advertisement in every corner of their operating system because they're mirroring what the world is doing, trying to cram an advertisement into every corner of the world. So you find those in a number of different places and most of these, as we said, are for Windows services, but we are starting to see the ones in the start menu are starting to push non-Microsoft services as well. So how long before we are seeing full-blown ads for complete third-party things? Is that something they would consider doing? I think it's something they would consider doing. I just don't think that the culture's there yet. And that's why they're slowly rolling it in with suggestions and they're all Microsoft products, as some of you have been telling me in the comments. They're all just Microsoft products. No, actually, they're now starting to roll out the ones that are not Microsoft products. Now, Let's get into the next part of this. You can disable this. And this is something a number of people have also said in the comments. Well, you can go ahead and disable those. 
Yeah, they are. There is no one place to go in and one simple to find toggle button says, show me no suggestions, no ads, not anywhere in my operating system. They don't have that. You deep go deep into the settings. There is a specific toggle box on the notifications page. There is a specific toggle box onto the file manager page. There is a specific toggle box onto the st uh, start menu page. So you have to go digging throughout the various settings in the various places to figure out where to turn these things off. And some of them will toggle themselves back on after system updates. Not always. But sometimes they do, which is interesting. So the people that say, well, you can just turn this off. Yeah, but I shouldn't even have to. An operating system is supposed to stay out of your way. It is a, a an organization that allows you to get your work done. It is not something that keeps on poking stuff into your face to try and get you to do something that you didn't turn on your computer to do in the first place. And that is what my issue has to do. So you need to go into a variety of different places. And as they add new ways of doing suggestions, you have to figure out where that new suggestion is. And then you got to wait for somebody who's dug through every single setting and found it and then will post it online and then you can probably find it. But there is now, getting to the point of this video, there is now an application that you can use to get rid of this. And this application is called OFGB. The application itself is actually called OFRIC Go Back. And no, I am not editing out that name. That is actually what they call it. They use Frick in there. So it's called OFRIC Go Back. It is on GitHub. And it is going to be a third party tool that allows you to run this application and then check what you'd like to see. Disable File Explorer ads. Oh, I forgot the lock screen ads. There's the disable, there's the general tips ads, disable the finish setup ads. Uh, that one's under a setting somewhere, and then you have to go into an advanced settings to find that one. And then there is a disable the welcome experience, disable personalized ads, disable tailored experiences, disable start menu ads, and disable notification settings. And then there are two that requires administration privileges, disable Bing results in search, and disable edge search bar widget. So you have a third party tool that for now allows you to make these changes. Of course, now that this is out, Microsoft's going to see this. And just like elementary OS, let's figure out a way to break the workarounds they have found. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> not to poke jobs at elementary OS, but they have been notorious for doing this. They don't like it when people edit their systems like Windows. It's very interesting. And so uh, in this... Uh, you have this OFRIC go back application that allows you to, once you run it, then you would run this application to turn off all of the things that the settings may have turned back on or may have added. So we need now a third party tool to remove the nonsense that gets in the way of your operating system that Windows crams upon you. That's what we're talking about. It's nuts. It's totally nuts. I am not a fan of this. And so the fact that we have to do some third party nonsense is ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is these suggestions or ads, as I call them, suggestions as they call them, they're actually not the big problem that I have with Windows. They are in annoyance. They are that rock that's in your shoe when you're taking a walk, but it's small enough of a rock that you just kind of deal with it rather than taking the time to dig it out because eh, you got to take your shoe off and maybe retie your laces on a bunch of nonsense. So you just kind of deal with it. Maybe you shift it around a little bit so it's not in the, the hurtful spot. That's what they are. They're not critical. What are the concerns I actually have with Windows? Number one, they have a ton of data collection in the system that goes back to Microsoft that you cannot turn off. You cannot say, Microsoft, I don't want to send you this data. Now, you might say, well, I mean, it's just diagnostic data. Yeah, diagnostic data. And there have also been reports of data containing the types of files you're doing and things like that. And that's just more information than Microsoft needs. Even if it is just diagnostic data, why do they need it? They're apparently not fixing stuff that are problems quite frequently. You can find just as much information about what's going on by scouring the forums than you can relying on the data analytics dragnet, which tends to collect more information than you actually 
need. Now, the next issue I have is the aggressive attempts to force an online account. Several of the ways that we have known to boot up and start up, uh, basically set up, I should say, a Windows 11 computer without a Microsoft account, they are blocking those as quickly as they can. It is now, I think, four or five different steps you have to do on the latest version of Windows 11 to get into the, uh, the setup without connecting a Microsoft account. And they're becoming more and more encumbersome to do with each attempt. Now, because they're forcing the online account, number three, they're forcing a storage of, key, uh, of uh, pass keys for our hard drives onto the online account. So they are basically encrypting our drive we'll get to that point next but they are encrypting our drive and taking the pass keys to decrypt that drive and storing it on the account which means the company itself has the keys to decrypt your data even if i don't want them to do that additionally it means if you have a microsoft account that they are able to collect a whole lot more data and do a much better job of tying that data directly to you as the user rather than just to a computer at an IP endpoint, which is significant because the difference is if I have four different computers, we're even talking about the four people living in a house and they all have their own computers. The old way of not having a Microsoft account, you get a, a, a general fuzzy picture because each person has their own interests. So you don't know which individual person has those. With everybody forced on their own Microsoft account, now they know exactly which person is tied to exactly which interest. And now they can better use that data for whatever purposes they have, whether those purposes be noble purposes or ignoble purposes. And that is a serious concern that I have. And then, of course, number four, the automatic encryption of of your drive without you being aware. Data encryption is a great thing, but when you do it without being aware of it and not being aware of how to overcome it is a serious fundamental problem and they should not be doing that on anybody without direct explicit opt-in. This is where Linux is great and that most Linux distributions, I can choose to encrypt the drive some of them, some of them, if I remember correctly, I think Pop! OS is one that does this. When you're installing it, it will assume you're automatically decrypt, uh, wanting to create an encrypted drive, but you have to actually explicitly enter the pass key at the login screen. It doesn't create the encryption and then assume that sometime later you're going to go into the settings and know to go into the, uh, is it VeraCrypt I think they're using, and grab your pass key out of the system. There is now if they were to change this and say, boom, your drive is encrypted. You must copy this thing down and confirm I have this down. Warning, if you do not have this information, you will lose your data if you need to decrypt your drive manually. If they did that, that'd be fine. The reason they don't, because A, that's encumbering, and B, they can just store your encrypt decryption keys in your account anyway, which is very convenient when some dude comes in with some sketchy warrant because they don't like particular views that you might happen to have. And that is where the fundamental problem is. It gives control of your system to the big corporation who is not on your side. And that is why I prefer and why I think everybody should switch to Linux as one is able to. Because on Linux, I don't have to deal with the advertisements. I don't have to deal with automatic encryption of drives. I don't have to deal with data collection. And I don't have to deal with the computer trying to aggressively force me to have an online account. Now, most of the modern desktop environments on Linux, you can use online accounts if you want to. There is no reason you can't. In fact, you can use Google and Microsoft accounts. The latest version of GNOME has full integration with OneDrive as well. So you can still use these accounts if you want to, but they are not foisted upon you. You have the choice whether to use such accounts or not. And that is why Linux is a better option. Now I have a playlist about getting started with Linux and I'm going to go ahead and end this video with a video that just my basic process of beginning steps of thinking about switching over to Linux. I encourage you to watch that video. So we'll wrap this up here. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, please do that if you like this type of content, whether it's issues that Windows is doing or some basic tutorials on switching to Linux. We got some great things coming up in the future as well. 
Go ahead and leave us a like or, hey, maybe a dislike if you want and uh, interact with the comments. I do read those comments and use those as part of uh, clarification points in future upcoming videos. With that, if you do want to start looking about uh, what you might want to do to make a slow switch to Linux, you're like not ready right now, but you want to consider the process, go ahead and have a look at this video here. And with that, thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.